you all right? Yeah, you just look dead tired, that's all. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the last time I felt rested? Uh, 2014, maybe? <laughs> Did you get enough to eat? Yeah, I did. Thanks. I'm glad you got that pheasant earlier. It was a nice change from fish and ramen. What do you say we rest up a little tomorrow? We've been making great time, and we'll reach the mountains in another day or so. The going will be a lot slower and a lot harder once we're there, so... It might be worth it to take a breather. Hunt a little, wash our clothes and ourselves in the river, get some extra sleep. And besides, our little slice of heaven here is pretty defensible. Not like undead could make the climb like we did. And anyone, or anything, coming from the other side would have to get through all that brush and make a lot of noise doing so. Or they'd have to cross the river so we'd hear the splashing. We've been going nonstop for a week and a half. I think it would do us some good. Then it's settled. <sighs> you know, once you take the whole survival aspect away, this almost feels like a normal camping trip. <laughs> oh yeah, I loved camping. I'd go all the time as a kid with my family, and when I got older, my brother and I would go over the weekends at a park near our house. Even when he'd go with his friends, he'd still let me tag along. I have many fond memories of spooky campfire stories and shitty camp food and the occasional mishap with a creature. <laughs> oh, I definitely have stories. Okay. Um, this one time, my brother brought his college buddy along with him. It was my senior year of high school, and we were headed out to this campground that was usually pretty empty that time of year. Not a lot of people camping yet on spring break. We picked a spot, rustled up some dinner, and then tidied up the campsite for the night. Now my brother's friend decided to put the food he brought into his tent. I saw him doing that and said, hey, you know, you should put your food up into the trees like we're doing. I even offered him one of our canisters and space in our pack to put snacks in, but he didn't want it. He just kind of scoffed at me. <laughs> and my brother backed me up, but the guy was still not interested in listening. So Ollie and I secured our own food and our backpacks up into a tree and crawled into our tent for the night. At some point in the middle of the night, we woke up to the loudest scream I have ever heard before or since. <laughs> no, it wasn't anything serious just the world's fattest raccoon. <laughs> it had smelled his food, chewed a hole into his tent, and helped itself to all the snacks in that tent, and then crawled up onto the guy in search for more. When he started screaming, the poor thing freaked out and started scampering around the tent and scratching at the walls. Eventually, we managed to open the tent and let the little guy out, and he went off into the woods full of jerky and cookies. <laughs> Oh, my brother's friend was really embarrassed, and then he got mad because we sided with the raccoon. <laughs> I don't think they ever spoke again after that trip. Nah, we didn't miss him. Camping was a fun tradition for us with or without company. Of course we'd do s'mores. It wasn't a camping trip without s'mores. Even when we'd be backpacking on longer trips, we still made a little space in our packs for graham crackers, chocolate, and marshmallows. <laughs> My perfect recipe is two toasted marshmallows, ever so slightly burned around the edges, with graham crackers and a peanut butter cup. But you've got to let the peanut butter cup sit on the cracker next to the fire and let it soften up a little bit. Mm, perfection. No, it's got to be ever so slightly burned, just for a second, so you get that slight crunch. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, to each their own. That's just how I like it. Everyone has a right to the s'more they prefer. What? I'm bleeding. Where? Oh. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I just got snagged on that barbed wire fence while we were running from that family of zombies. And then I made it worse while we were climbing up here. It's not so bad. Besides, it looks like you got worse than I did. No, really, it'll be okay. <sighs> okay, but only if you let me do the same for you. Hey, those are my terms. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just my hands and left arm. I kind of tried to rinse off the dirt earlier. I can pull my sleeve up, sure. Yeah, I'm ready. Ah, no, you're good. <laughs> Just stings a little. Don't apologize, it's okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, I'll be more careful next time. <laughs> In that moment, my choice was barbed wire to the hands or being eaten alive. And I'd like to point out that you made the same decision I did. I'm fine. Gosh, you're such a mother hen. No, I don't hate it. I don't need a bandage or anything. It's not very deep. Let's save the supplies. A little ointment will be just fine. Thank you. Your turn. Sleeve up so I can see your wrist. You ready? Here goes. <laughs> Sorry. More camping stories? Uh, okay. When I was growing up, we had one of those tents that was divided down the middle, so every noise Ollie and I made would wake our parents. We liked to chatter a lot, so we always got shushed from across the tent. One night, we were trying to drift off when I felt something moving underneath my sleeping bag, and I woke Ollie up and told him I was scared, and he told me to leave him alone and let him sleep. Sure enough, we got shushed. <laughs> so I lay there and stayed quiet, but I could still feel something moving around. After a little while, it stopped, and then Ollie sat bolt upright in his sleeping bag and said, I felt it too. We got shushed again. I said, but mom, dad, there's really something moving around. So my dad got up out of his sleeping bag and came over with the flashlight, looked around, but he didn't see anything. He got a little grumpy, told us to go back to sleep or else. Ollie and I squished over into the far corner of the tent, and every time we felt something moving, we'd try to quietly move somewhere else. Not a lot of space to go, so we were moving around frequently. My parents were so pissed at us, they didn't get any sleep that night. The next morning, we were all sleep deprived and cranky, and of course packing up the campsite had us even more on edge. So we mostly tried to stay out of the way, but then we went to take down the tent and we found a massive rattlesnake skin right underneath our side of it. Yeah, it had shed its skin in the middle of the night, or at least finished the process. All I'll say is, Dad pulled over for ice cream on the way home. <laughs> Best apology ever. There you go. Should be scabbed over by morning. You're welcome. I'm in a bank of fire. You can go ahead and sleep. I'll take first watch. Well, yeah, I am exhausted, but so are you, and I always take first watch. You think we could get away with both of us sleeping through the night? You're right, I did say it was defensible. <laughs> How dare you use my own logic against me? 
Okay, yeah, let's both get some rest then. Gosh, it's still so cold out at night. <sighs> yeah, I think it's colder tonight than it has been. It's clear though, that's probably why. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. <sighs> I just gotta get the sleeping bag warmed up so I'll stop shivering. <laughs> what? Are you sure? I'm an actual popsicle right now. I'll just make you colder. <laughs> okay, I, I won't say no to warmth. <laughs> oh my god, you're like a furnace. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> is this why you've been sleeping so well at night? Because you stay so warm? Oh, <laughs> well, you'll have to teach me how to generate body heat then. Or we could just do this again. You don't mind me being all up in your business like this? You like it. Oh. Well, <laughs> the feeling is mutual. Go to sleep. You want me to sing? I mean, if it'll help you drift off, sure. It's only fair if you're keeping me this warm. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Close your eyes. Somewhere in the west there's a place meant for me Somewhere on the lone prairie And I'll make my home Where the buffalo roam That's where I'll ever be Give me a home on the prairie Give me a home on the plain Through sunshine or rain To lose or to gain Give me a home on the plain I love the green valley, the long winding rills. I love to ride o'er the slow rolling hills. Give me a home on the prairie. Give me a home on the plain. With my loved ones so true When my day's work is through Give me a home on the plain Sleep well. <laughs>